Welcome to the weekly sermon from Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. We pray that you find this sermon relevant and faithful and hear God speaking to you through these words. Today we are continuing the B campaign with hundreds of churches across the country. This series originated from the Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City, and it is designed to address the division that we find in our politics and in our society that seems to be so prevalent these days, especially with an election coming up. You see, Jesus invites everyone who follows him to both love their neighbors and their enemies, those that they disagree with. And our faith is not just an idea or about a personal relationship with God. It's also about our actions in the world, how we treat one another, how we act in our public society. And unfortunately, too often Christians get caught up in choosing sides in politics and other areas of life and can sometimes become a part of the problem of division and hurt and harm instead of the solutions that lead to health and hope and healing. During this series, we're focusing on a scripture passage that you may be familiar with from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. I think we've got the words on the screen. I want you to read these words with me together. Will you say Micah 6, 8 with me? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly. God invites us to be just and kind and humble. Last week, we launched our series by remembering the context of this prophet Micah who lived centuries ago, and yet how the times that he wrote in are not so dissimilar from the world that we live in today. There are people that are wealthy and have political power, and there are people that are poor and don't have power, and oftentimes, too often, those that are in power are oppressing those that don't have power, and we create systems to keep those in power in their place and those without power in their place. And we can find ourselves participating in these systems sometimes unconsciously and unfortunately sometimes by deciding so. These are the times of the prophet Micah. The people of Israel had were ruled by a foreign power and they decided that they were going to stop paying tribute and the foreign power didn't like this very much. So the Assyrian Empire sends their armies and they eventually conquer completely the northern kingdom of Israel. And Micah is writing to the people and reminding them why this is happening because they've turned from God. They they have forgotten about what it means to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly. Instead, they focused on their religious observances and paying attention to doing things the right way instead of doing the right things that God might be calling them to. And so Micah reminds them, what does God require of us but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God? We looked at last week this idea of doing justice and remember that this word means to make right judgments. How do we decide between what's right and what's wrong? It's about making sure that those that are in a particular situation that that are are, uh, uh, obligated or should receive something, that they actually receive it. Too often, though, we find that people that might be able to receive support and care and help in times of need oftentimes don't find it. And so we talk about that as the opposite, as injustice. And so when we choose in our everyday life to take action for what is right, to speak up for those that may not be able to speak for themselves, to give our power away in places where it might be needed, this is doing justice, making choices between what's right and wrong, and making sure that we offer our voice to those that need a voice. Now today we're going to turn our attention to the second phrase in Micah 6, 8, to love kindness. And uh, when we think about kindness, we have serious issues to consider as a society and in our community. And many people would agree that we need to do justice. We do need to do justice, but people will disagree about exactly what does that mean? What policy should be in place in our society or by our government so that justice is done? How am I to act when I am called to do justice in any particular circumstance? Sometimes it's difficult to tell. And other times it's very clear, and sometimes we find ourselves on opposite sides. Both people trying to hold a position where they say, I am trying to do justice, but they find themselves taking different actions. 
We may disagree about what it means to do justice in any situation, and so it's perhaps even more important that we go about our life with a posture of kindness, to do justice and to love kindness. Because Micah says this is what the Lord requires. It's not a suggestion. It's a requirement. And last week we, talked to, we learned the Hebrew word mishpat, which means justice. It means to take right action. And the second word I'll we'll invite you to pay attention to, to today is hesed. That's the Hebrew word that's translated here. It is a powerful word. It's used over 250 times in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, and it can be translated in a variety of ways. So depending on the translation of your Bible, you'll see different angles of this meaning. You can look at Micah 6.8 in, uh, in a variety of translations and see different words used here. Hesed, in one way, is under, being understood as concern for another person. Concern for another person, and so it can often be translated as compassion, showing concern for someone else, being compassionate. compassionate. It is a commitment not only to feel compassion, but to provide care or help, to do something tangible, to make a difference in the life of someone else. And in this case, we have it translated as kindness, what we have in our text uh, today. Someone else needs something, and you're trying to help them out. This is hesed. Of course, it also means that you provide aid to someone who has no right to expect it from you. Some cases, we offer aid to those who might expect it from us, and in other times, we offer it from, for someone that, that we might ha- not have a relationship with them. We might receive it from someone that does, has no connection with us. And in this case, it is, it is translated as mercy. Mercy or grace is this idea of unmerited favor when we're offering something for someone that has no right to expect it of us. And then when it comes to relationships with people in our church, in our family, or in our community, you might understand this word as meaning a form of steadfast love or loyalty. We find all of these ways of understanding this word are in the scriptures. And what's most important in every single way of understanding this we find that God offers these things to us first. God offers each of us mercy and compassion, kindness, steadfast love and loyalty, and then, only then, this is what God expects from us towards other people. Our community looks more like the kingdom of God when we set aside focusing only on ourselves and instead live in this kind of posture toward other people. So today I want to take a closer look at these passages of Scripture that we read a few moments ago and see how each of them are a demonstration of this idea of being compassionate, of offering mercy and grace to other people. And we begin in the Old Testament with the story of Elijah and a widow. Now you remember this story that Elijah has gone to Zarephath, the town, and as he comes he sees someone, a widow there collecting sticks. And he calls out to her and says, can I have a bit of water and something to eat? And she says, she gives him a cup of water and says, well, yes, I'd be glad to give, her, give you food, but I only have a handful of flour left. I don't have much for myself. I'm collecting these sticks you see here so that I can go back and prepare the last meal that I am able to prepare for myself and my son. Do you see kindness at work here? A stranger has arrived into town and someone that lives there, when asked, offers food and something to eat, and not only something to eat, but of the very last that she has for herself and her son. And Elijah goes with her, but he says this, this is what the Israel's God, the Lord says, the jar of flour won't decrease, and the bottle of oil won't run out until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. The widow went and did what Elijah said, and then Elijah and the widow's household ate for many days. Perhaps because, or connected with, or maybe just at the same time as this act of kindness. The widow offers kindness for Elijah. Elijah offers this blessing, this miracle from God, and the people of Israel continue to celebrate it for this day. The responsive reading we read from the Psalms describes over and over this idea of our response to God because God has first offered compassion for us. God made his ways known to Moses and his deeds known to Israelites. Verse 8, the Lord is compassionate and merciful, 
very patient and full of faithful love, compassionate and merciful. These words that we are offered and invited to live out a posture of kindness, we see here in the Psalms that God offers them to us first. When you consider your life and how you're choosing, how often do you reflect on what God has received, offered to you, and then offer it to other people? The scriptures say that God doesn't deal with us according to the way that we act, but instead offers us mercy and compassion that God indeed offers us hesed. And then the scripture from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12, oftentimes I'll read this when I officiate a marriage ceremony because it describes so powerfully this idea of people being bonded together in steadfast love and loyalty. In a marriage, people are making a commitment to each other to go on forever. And likewise, God has made a commitment to us to love us, to offer care for us, and from now until forever from now. It's not God that turns away from us, from us. It's us that turns away from God. God first offers us compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Because God has offered this for us, we can offer it to other people. And finally, this passage from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20. Jesus is walking along, as he so often does, and there are crowds that are following him. There are two blind men sitting along the side of the road. They heard of Jesus. They heard that he was coming by. And what do they do? They ask, they say, show us mercy, Lord, son of David. Show us mercy. And Jesus doesn't make assumptions about what they might need. He turns to them and says, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Sometimes in my efforts to do kindness, to act kindly in the world, I make assumptions about other people. Sometimes I think I know what someone else might need, and I try to offer it to them, and it turns out, you know, that's not really what was actually helpful at all. Jesus models for us an idea of acting kindly, of showing mercy, of being compassionate, by asking and listening and not assuming. So this week, remember that this call from Micah 6, 8, that we're called to do justice, to make right decisions, choose between right and wrong, and to do it when we disagree, especially when we disagree with how justice is to be done, to do it compassionately and mercifully, to do it with kindness. And in this way, we will find our world transformed. Will you pray with me? God, we give you praise and thanks for the compassion, the mercy, and the kindness that you offer to us. We ask that you would encourage and inspire us to live in these ways as we go about our everyday life, to do justice and to seek kindness, to live how you would have us to live. And we offer all these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to this week's sermon. I hope that you can join us next week. To learn more about Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church, visit us online at swumc.org.